in. Bring it on in. Hi, guys. Welcome. All right. I think it's mostly competitors in here now. A couple of straggly parents and spectators. Good. All right. Can everybody hear me okay? Who? Henry Gross, are you here? Henry Gross. Henry Gross, are you here? Henry Gross. All right, welcome everyone to, uh, let's see, let me do this one more time. The National Ninja League Season 7 Action Athletics Traditional Course Qualifier. Nailed it. Yay. Um, we have a great course uh, set up for you guys today. Uh, the National, oh, a little bit of housekeeping. I see you're all wearing your masks. Thank you so much. We have some unvaccinated among us. We want to make sure that they are protected. Uh, so while we are in the gym, we will be uh, wearing our masks at all times. If you need to use the restroom, uh, the restrooms are over there. There's a men's room that's marked by Superman, a woman's restroom marked by Wonder Woman, and there's a family restroom marked by Pac-Man. So you guys can all find your way through those. There's also water uh, in the water fountain. Um, and yes, the National Ninja League uh, is sanctioning this event. Uh, so all National Ninja League rules will be followed for all obstacles, setups, and uh, judgments. The Ninja Works timing system will be controlling all of the timing and scoring for this event. Uh, and as soon as I find Coach Casey, who is in the back. Coach Casey, uh, Coach Casey will be your course judge today. He will be the man with the button uh, handling all the points, completions, and all of that. Okay. Uh, that being said, how many did you of you watched the course walkthrough video? Fantastic. So that means this should go pretty quickly. I apologize that we're running a little bit late today. Uh, we had a lot of runouts, and I wanted to give you guys more bang for your buck, more obstacles. I didn't want anybody to feel like, eh, it's just a speed course. We're only on it for a minute 10. This is 245. This is a, a long time for you guys to be on this course, okay? When it comes time for you to go, you will stand or you will uh, – have first looked at the leaderboard slash uh, run order that is on the TV screen above the action room. Keep in mind uh, that is where the run order will be hosted. It will also pop up on the uh, projector back there from time to time. If the line manager cannot find you, eh, there's a good chance, not a good chance, there's a chance you might miss your run. Make sure you're available to the line manager. That's Zach. Hi, Zach. Hi. Okay. When it is your turn to run, you are going to start on this block right here. Coach Casey is going to ask you something to the effect of, uh, are you ready? Do you have any questions? Are you ready? Yes. Do you have any questions? No. Fantastic. Off we go. Boop, 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 beep. And you're hitting the first obstacle, the skewy steps. I'm never going to get it right. It's not a real word. They are eight by eight. They are padded. They do not move. There's no tricks here at all. There's no actuators. There's no springs. None of that. These last two are a bit askew, which will give you a clue as to what you should do when you're moving around. I couldn't keep it going. I wanted to. Uh, as you're swinging around. Now notice the second obstacle is on a, a platter. Okay. You are going to jump from the last skewy step to this rope. As soon as you make contact with this rope, we're going to give you a point. I don't want anybody to leave here without any points. We have, it hasn't happened so far. Everybody gets a point just for touching this. Okay. If you get hung up on this rope, which could happen, it goes in a circle, ropes do weird things, you have got to fight. If things do not go according to plan, please keep your momentum up. This rope wants to rest right here like this. If you just hang there and you're like, I don't know what to do, neither does the rope, okay? You've got to stay active. Your goal is to make it all the way over to here, up to here, and your finished platform here. If you bypass that and go straight to here, that's fine. If somehow you end up on the action room window sill it's fine that's all in play i don't care get to here don't touch the floor all right that's obstacles one and two any questions still got a question no cool all right we're going to make our way out onto the floor please fill in this lane here you can all hear me i'm fine yeah it's good all right obstacle number three the aviary. I'll take 10 seconds off anybody's time who can tell me what an aviary is. Just kidding. But I like your hand. What's an aviary? It's a birdhouse. Big birdhouse. These are birdhouses. Aviary. Cool words, right? 
You're going to start on this ring here. You're going to use this birdhouse, this birdhouse, this birdhouse, and this ring to make your way all the way down to this landing platform here. The finish platform is here, the top of this. You will get your point when you go over the top. You got me? So if you hit here and slide back down into that, that's a fail. These are here to keep your feet from going all the way down to the mats. Okay? This is your start finish platform, so you may not fall off of this into the pit on this side. Everybody clear on that? Any questions? Good. Okay. Next obstacle is the Monster Mountain. This is here for your benefit, as is everything else to get you to the finish platform. Um, if you fall in the pit, that's a fail. Everything else is pretty much in play. You can grab this, you can grab this, you can grab this. The only thing you cannot grab is the top of the monster tooth. If you somehow make it all the way up to the top of the plywood, don't grab that. On the back side, you've got this black jug hold here. You've got two uh, yellow stage four jug holds. You've got two purples and two reds. You can take the high road all the way up across there, or like a lot of people have been doing, you can lache straight across if you want to. It's completely up to you, okay? Your finish platform, excuse me, sir. Your finished platform is here, okay? This is finished platform for Monster Mountain. Start finished platform, so don't fall forward on it, right? Okay. If you come in hot and you're here and you step onto the floor here and then go, oh no, sorry, you touch the floor of the next obstacle, okay? Gotta stay on it. Any questions about Monster Mountain? Not since mature kids. Mature kids, into uh, preteens, we raised it up. Or no, maybe it was kids to mature kids. Yeah, not since then, okay? All right, no more questions on Monster Mountain. Now we are into the stage four space program, okay? We have our orbiting disk here. We have our moon rocks here. Some of you might remember those from a couple years ago. We have our ride the lightning here. We have another moon rock here, and your finished platform is here, okay? Now, this is a quick turnaround point. Please do your best to not touch the spinning disk. This is a quick turnaround point here, okay? Some of you guys are gonna be booking it. If you pull one of these here, here, and down, you did not clear the plane of the obstacle and you didn't fully disengage from the moon rock, okay? Here is the plane, here it is, up and over and back down, okay? Make sure you clear the plane before you head to the next obstacle. Make sure you complete, okay? Any questions about the space program? Alien life is out there, I promise you. Okay, next thing, we're heading to the pizza cutters. This is the start platform for the pizza cutters. This is the start platform for the pizza cutters because according to NNL rules, a trampoline cannot be a start platform. So you are gonna come here. Pass over it, tap it on the way by, I don't care. Get yourself to the trampoline, you can take as many bounces as you want, and you're going to engage the pizza cutters. Now, just so you guys know for frame of reference, all of these notches are one foot apart. So if you count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there you go. Probably about a six foot, a little less, uh, or a little more than a six foot lache, maybe. Uh, these have nice grooves in them, so you can grab a hold of them. Um, it's a really mellow grab, guys. It might seem a little intimidating, but clamp onto those things and hold on tight, okay? They are both the same distance apart. You don't have to link them, just get through them, okay? Finish platform for this obstacle is right here. Clear the, pain, the plane. It is not a start finish platform. If you pitch it forward off of this one, you're fine, okay? Any questions on pizza cutters? Good. Next up, boomerangs, okay? We have done you guys a huge favor and put peg ball graspers on the fronts of the boomerangs, okay? If you were watching the first wave at all, you'll see this obstacle has kind of had its teeth cut out of it a little bit. Don't worry, we'll ramp it up for the next group. Um, starting here, you're gonna reach up to the, uh, the first bar here you may use the peg ball graspers to uh, make your way from one boomerang to the next and then eventually to your landing platform there. If you don't want to use the peg ball graspers and you want to use the top of the boomerang, that's totally fine. You may use all parts of it except for the structure behind uh, and the bearing plate in the front, okay? Peg ball graspers are in, top is in, everything else is off, okay? Yeah. If you would like a booster block, there's one right back over there. We'll make sure it's available for you. Okay? Cool. Any other questions about boomerangs? Awesome. All right, now, everybody head over to where Coach Matt is standing, right over there. Go, up, go ahead and feel free to swarm him. OK. 
Okay. Next up, we have the fish market. The fish market's right downtown near the frog pond. So, you guys are just gonna make a simple salmon ladder transfer. Now, this salmon ladder is up to you, okay? It's like a choose your own adventure. The bar needs to come across, and it can go however high you need it to in order to set up your move to the froggy delivery, okay? However high you need it to. You need to make the transfer, and this is a touch point obstacle that is completed when you touch the froggy delivery. Got me? Okay, so whether or not you complete this, if, as long as you touch it, you'll score the point. But the goal is to complete it, right? Okay, any questions about fish market? Yes? You may. Yep, was that your question too? The bar is not heavy. In fact, don't do it, Matt. Oh, well, you did it for the last group. It's completely zeroed out. Right? Cool. All right. So, fish market. I appreciate that you guys are strategizing, but if you strategize too much and you miss a rule, that's not on me. That's on you. Once you've caught the froggy delivery, which I guarantee every single one of you in here will, you're going to make the transfer to the rope to the next froggy delivery and dismount here. You don't have to use this one if you want to go straight from the rope, it's totally fine, you can skip it, okay? But we're going right here, okay? This is a bit higher than the mat, so that, don't put it in the judge's hands, this for sure, but, okay? This is your landing platform. This is made of wood with turf on top of it. Land on your feet, okay? It's not super padded. Any questions about froggy delivery? Or what do we call this? Frog pond. Frog pond. All right, now you're going to make your way around here. Conveyor belt. We have five rolling conveyor belts. Starting on this platform here, ending on that platform there. Uh, did we use hands and feet with this group? We did hands and feet. Hands and feet. All right, hands and feet are allowed. Um, listen, you guys are, will have just completed a pretty, uh, you know, pretty long upper body series, uh, starting back here with these. So it's upper body, upper body, upper body. Um, this is here to break up your upper body series a little bit, but don't sleep on this obstacle. I've been seeing people fail it all day, and it's made the difference between them completing and not, okay? Don't sleep on this obstacle. They go up, they go back down. You can use your hands and feet. You may not use the metal here on the sides. Um, that is off. Other than that, if you try to grab this or use this to support you, you may not do that either, okay? If you if you go by and it's like incidental, fine. If you use it to support yourself, that's putting it in the judge's hands. It's probably going to call you. Any questions about conveyor belt? Awesome. Next up, 3-4 defense, okay? This is how it's going to be set up for you. You guys may use the cliffhanger. You may use the peg ball grasper, okay? We had one kid in the last group use the top here. That's fine. Okay, just steer clear of the structure here. Don't try to stick your finger in there and hang from that. I don't know why you would, but okay. This is fine. Also, this is off, so you guys can see this. Inside there, that's just waiting to rip a finger off or cut you up. That's not part of it, okay? So this is on, this is on, top of here is on. All right, you're gonna use these three. They spin pretty aggressively, okay? Good. To get up to the UFOs, that is a touch point. Once you touch the UFO, you have completed the 3-4 defense. Just touching it. But you're not gonna just touch it, you're gonna grab it, okay? You're gonna grab, throw the lache, throw the lache, make your way to this finished platform here, okay? Question. Um, the touch point is the first one. Okay. Any other questions? Good. Lastly, final climb. James is standing right over here with the rest of my crew. You're going to make your way over to the green start platform where James is standing. You are going to climb up the devil steps to the sliding angel step on the top. Slide it over. Hit the buzzer. If you do not hit the buzzer such that it causes the timer to stop and you come down, that is on you. Make sure that buzzer stops, okay? 
So if you're up there and you're celebrating, you're like, yeah, I nailed it, awesome, and you fall down into the pit and the timer's still going, that's it. And that's a real bummer of a way to end a run, right? Make sure you press that, that buzzer such that it causes the timer to stop, okay? Everybody got the rules? Question? Yeah. Yep. You can do it. You can do it like a cannonball, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. No, they're all just flat. Flat on the top. Flat on the top. Okay? Yes. Hands only. Hands only. Good call. I have an announcement about the warm up area. Yes. Hello, my friends. We're about to send you into the warm up area, but we're going to ask since this wave is so large that only the first 12 competitors in the run order enter the warm up area at this time. As soon as we start to get a few runners through this course, we're going to let the rest of you in there, okay? But we want to give you all adequate time to warm up and not have you wait in line. Sound good? Sure. All right. Thanks so much. All right. So let me get my run order up so I can see it, and we'll announce the first 12 competitors that can go head into the action room. Run order, please. The mat was on for the last round, was it? No, it not for, not for preteens. All right. Uh, have we found Henry Gross? He might be gone. Zachary, Benjamin, Benjamin, Wyatt, Taya, Joseph, Cameron, Shane, Quinn, Lily Barrett, Ashlyn, Lily Moniger, and Adelina. You may head into the action room and start warming up. All right, live stream, we are going to get uh, our competitors on the course here in just a little bit. Uh, if you haven't been watching the uh, walkthrough, um, this is the wave. This is the one that all the preteen competitors strive to get into uh, so that um, they can compete against some of the best of the best. New, New England has some of the strongest preteen ninjas around, and they are all going to be featured uh, in this wave. So um, we're going to give these first 12 kids just a little bit of time to warm up here. I believe our teen wave is scheduled to start at 6, and that is going to get pushed back a little bit uh, just because the course ended up being a little bit longer than we thought. A lot of people signed up at the last minute, which... Uh, I mean, sure, it's a great thing, uh, but it does hurt our, our planning a little bit. If you could do us a favor before our skills comp, um, if you're going to sign, plan on signing up for that and you haven't already, uh, just do us a favor and sign up a little bit earlier. Uh, it just helps the planning, helps us run on time. Not that we don't want you here, but we don't want you leaving upset with us because we ruined, you know, your Saturday evening or something like that. I mean, well, we had made dinner plans, but we still want to see our kid compete. Totally understand. Um, We've been at a few ninja comps in the past that might have run far, far more over than, than this one. But we always try to do our best here to stay on top of things. So maybe another two minutes to let these uh, ninjas warm up. And then we're going to give Coach Casey the go ahead to, uh, to get these guys out on the course. So sit tight and we'll be right back.
All right, ninjas, here we are. Wave two of the preteen age group. We are going to get our first uh, competitor to the start line, Henry Gross. It's apparently a scratch today. Shame. Henry Gross is a, a new member of the uh, Action Ninja team. I would have been interested to see uh, Henry out on the course. He's a very uh, capable young man. And, you know, the more competition experience you can get is great. But we're happy to have Zachary Moss on the team. Or on the course, sorry. <laughs> Zach is a well-known commodity around here. I believe he runs for, oh, no, TA, TA Plymouth, TA Weymouth. Seen him a couple times before. Look at this kid moving through very quickly. Firm handle on that. And the pull through. There we go. Slept on the space program. I'm telling you guys. I, I warned him about it during walkthrough. The balance obstacles on this course are tricky for sure. Um, you don't want to tempt fate with those. All right, and we're back. Just a quick powwow with our, uh, there we go. Zachary Moss finishing out there. Man, so many names over there. This, this uh, age group in particular is the ones who have probably ended up training with their various gyms the longest and stuck with the program because uh, they were, you know, six, seven-year-olds when they started. Um, and now they're becoming... Uh, Pre-teens, teenagers, you know, really growing up. And it's, it's so interesting to see. Benjamin Kozlowski on the course right now. And makes short work of the birdhouses. He's one of the bigger competitors uh, in, this, in this age group. Very tall. Oh, just a simple, simple error. I mean, things like that can happen. Like, you know, when you're running on the course and your mask just magically falls down below your chin. Um, you know, sometimes accidents happen. And he just had one right there. Got to cram his legs underneath these pizza cutters a little bit. We talked about, uh, oh, what was his name in the last wave? Super tall Zenden. Zenden was super tall and struggled. Uh, you know, ask any of those big ninjas. Ask John Alexis. Ask Henry Ferrarin. Ask Jody Avila when he's training. He's got to be aware of, you know, where his legs are. And these young kids are not immune to it either. We got some kids in this age group who need booster blocks to get up to some of the obstacles, and we have some kids who need to keep their legs up. So just... Is what it is. Ben's going to get a little chalk here before the salmon ladder bar. Now, he did ask if he could move the bar up to a comfortable height, and that is acceptable. Oh, just crossed it up. See, it's so tall, he's just going to jump right up to the special delivery. He, he wants to do it. Well, maybe he's not that tall. <laughs> Thought he was. Over to the conveyor belt. On the bend he goes. Well, 
There we go. I just got to get up to that UFO. Okay. This seems to be the strategy for these guys. Now they're trying to go to that midsection of the Stage 4 logo. And he's kind of got him a little bit below the monster tooth there. But you can see the UFO that he's going for. Oh, tapped it. But down there. And the final climb to the steps where he will find the buzzer waiting for him. And there it goes, timed out. He got his full pull, 245. We move forward to our next competitor, another Benjamin, Benjamin Perino. Looks like Benjamin is coming to us from Ninja Mania, if I read my shirts correctly. <laughs> All right, Benjamin around the bend on this one. Gets him up to. Very nice, easily through the aviary. Again, in case you're just tuning in for this wave, uh, Ninja Mania, one of the newest members of uh, the New England Ninja Association. We are happy to have them um, be a part of our community, competing as a team. Uh, They're a very strong team for sure. And we've had a lot of great athletes show up today. Um, so I'd like to count Benjamin amongst them. And we're happy that we're gonna be seeing him a couple times this year as a, uh, as a fellow Nina competitor. Woo! Nice. Get that flight, kiddo. Bang! No doubt there from Benjamin. This kid likes to fly. Let's see what he's got for the boomerangs. Grabs that first peg ball grasper. Good. And through. Very nice. On his horse, running through. He's got to make the salmon ladder transfer. One backswing. Off he goes. Oh, a little crooked there. Okay. Oh, ex exit up. No, he's swear. Okay. Got to hit this special delivery. Oh! Straight down on it. But moves him up into third place. He was moving to that point. So these are just far enough apart that they can be staticked. But some of these smaller competitors are trying to find new and exciting ways of uh, make, getting them to not spin. There you go. That's a little ninja creativity like there. Look at this. Again, we've been saying this all day. Just because your, your run is over technically on the scoreboard doesn't mean you can't give your teammates some beta, all the other ninjas that are around watching. They definitely want to see it. They want to know. Here we go. Good. Just got to get the swing to the UFO. Got there. Get up there and get that step. Uh, and time expires on Benjamin's run. Hey, other than that little slip up there, good run out of Benjamin. All right, next up. Got Wyatt Herman. It's an MC Hammer fan. So Wyatt has a uh, rather large uh, ninja course in his yard, but in addition to ninja, he loves uh, basketball, skiing, and wake surfing. I agree with you, Wyatt. Wyatt is. A wake surfing is some of the most fun you can have on the water. If you look at his hands, you might think he's wearing gloves, uh, but he's not. That's just, he loves chalk. Lots and lots of chalk. Chalks up a bunch before uh, every run. Kind of part of his pregame routine. Come almost like a signature trademark there. There you go, makes his way around the moon rocks. Very nice. Definitely one to watch. Up and over, now through the boomerangs. 
Very nicely done through the boomerangs as he makes his way back to the salmon ladder bar. It's got that urgency that you get from, oh, he put even, stopped to put even more chalk on <laughs> mid-run. All right, one shot up, and it looks like he doesn't need to go up anymore. He's going to go right for this special delivery. Oh, and just pushed his way through it. Just pushed his way through it. You know, like we say, that's somehow gets a little bit more chalk, just in case he didn't have enough. He's got a clamp down on that UFO. Oh, thing is just spinning on him left and right. Cannot quite get. Oh, there he goes. All right, now he's in a position to make the connection. Couldn't quite make the connection to the second uh, UFO there. And slides it over and... There he goes, and he gets it. So he completed the fish market, but could not quite make the connection to the next one. All right. Next up, young Teophilia Walton, a newcomer to the uh, preteen age division. She was uh, in the Mature Kids last year. Makes her way right around rotation. Gets herself right out onto the birdhouses. Hence why we call it the aviary. And nice and easy driving those knees. Big pullback. There you go. Taya very controlled in the air. Reaching out for it. There she goes. You'll very rarely see Taya make a uh, non-deliberate move. She's very deliberate in the way that she approaches obstacles, stays within her skill set. She's one what you, you would call like a, you know, a power ninja, especially when it comes to balance obstacles. She's very methodical. See how calm her legs are. No Jimmy legs from Taya. Very nicely done. Around the corner she goes. And let's see. Pizza cutters it is. There you go. She had to duck her head a little bit to the side there. Almost threw a little too big. Good. And... Up she goes. Now on to the boomerangs. Sets it up. Again, very methodical. Doesn't want to make a mistake here. Just sees it. She sees the course very well. Okay. Minute left on the clock. And she is still alive. Plenty of time to complete this course if she can be efficient. Salmon ladder transfer. Looks good, but mm, nope, just bottoms of her feet. Yeah, interesting. Just couldn't quite keep those feet up on that. Now she's on to our 3 4 defense. Does anybody know when the Pats are playing tomorrow? I don't. I'm in the mood for some football. If it's a one o'clock game, we're screwed because we're here for the hot box of adult and elite, young adult and mature, our master's division uh, action. But if they play in the eight o'clock game, might get home in time for that. I'll tell you just about the time out here. Can she get all the way up? There's a body in there somewhere. There she goes. Across, across, across. Oh, just time's out. Good run out of Taya. I mean, just a... A little tap there on the salmon ladder. All right, next up, Joseph Ruiz. So we've got, well, he's got excellent taste in music, that's for sure. 4 p.m. Pats game? 
All right. Thanks, Mr. Arnstein. Well, maybe we'll catch the tail end of it around dinner time. We smushed everybody together here uh, during the uh, during the middle of the day tomorrow. We don't want to monopolize your entire day with our live stream. We know we appreciate you guys that are glued to it. If you're not sick of hearing me yet, maybe uh, I'm going to put it out to the interwebs that you're like, hey, if that guy had a podcast or a Patreon, I'd probably listen to it. Anybody that can do eight hours talking about Kids Ninja could certainly tackle some hard-hitting subjects. <laughs> Meanwhile, Joseph Ruiz. And I mean this in the nicest way possible because his father is a massive man. Please don't hurt me. This is the maybe the quietest I've ever seen his father coaching his son through the, <laughs> the course. He's, he's such an animated, such a big character. He was really stormed onto the ninja scene. We're so glad to have these guys, you know, down in Westchester. Part of Nina. I look forward to competing against them this year. Showing why. There he goes. Very composed. He's the second one that's done that match and crossover move. Didn't want to take the chance of hanging just a hand out there. So, so far, nobody's gotten through. Uh, into the frog pond. We got stuck shopping at the fish market. Here we go. Now his dad's starting to come alive. You can hear him kind of coaching. That, is he going to go from there? That is a big up move from that bar. Oh, he just kind of air jordan it. Can't catch a special delivery with one hand in your left hand pocket. Seemed like he was going from a little low. Maybe that was the strategy. I've, I know that uh, special deliveries are... are I gotta stop calling it that. Uh, froggy deliveries are easy to, to come at uh, if you're just a little bit below it. Uh, but that seemed a, a little bit lower than usual. And th here you go, no problem across there. Now keep in mind, he didn't finish the 3-4 uh, the defense or the UFOs. So his arms are probably still a little fresher than they otherwise would be. And that angel step can be a little tricky, especially when it's not something that you're used to. Um, much like if you were watching the earlier divisions and you saw Minion Madness, where we had the kids have to slide uh, the Minion faces down the bars. If it's weighted, it's not really gonna wanna move. Uh, you have to unweight it in order to uh, get it to slide. So uh, that's the trick to the angel step. You need to apply some upward force to it uh, in order to get it to come around. Now, uh, Cam Godbout, they, uh, Last year, uh, World Championship qualifier. I believe we saw him down in Jersey. Trains down. Is he at TA Plymouth now? He was at Laidback for a while. Ocean City. I know he's down in Rhode Island. But really a nice young, young man who's really stepped into his own, stepped out of the shadow of, uh, I believe he and Jonathan Godbout are cousins. Um, Jonathan Godbout, obviously an a and uh, junior, two-time competitor, and uh, a very qualified ninja in his own right. But this, his little cousin is uh, starting to make a name for himself in the preteen division. It's fun to watch. He's got a nice, solid skill set. Ooh. Is he okay? Yeah. That was smart. He threw a little too big on it. And, and instead of kind of like, remember we said when Taya uh, threw on it earlier, she moved her head out, out of the way and still managed to grab it. I think Cam just kind of put his hands up and pushed it away. It was like, no thanks. Um, when we were testing that, that obstacle yesterday, Dave Cavanaugh was here and he was looking for all sorts of ways to shirk uh, having to do the obstacles, throwing and ducking. There's Cam getting the special, the froggy delivery, special froggy, froggy special. <laughs> I gotta come up with a different name. There he goes. Back onto the conveyor belt. So that special froggy delivery didn't count, unfortunately, because of the uh, flywheel. Such a shame. But to get back to my story, Kavanaugh was here, and he, was, he said he claimed the role of being the best ducker in a and history. He can throw sketchy things from all different angles and uh, duck out of the way. And nobody ducks like Dave Kavanaugh. Certainly a specific skill set to have. It served him well over the years, I'd have to say.
It's no surprise Cam's starting to really come into his own. He says uh, he's ninja obsessed and quit every other sport to focus on ninja. He is, uh, however, in addition, a master chess player. Good for him. I know a lot of our uh, ninja team members play online chess. In fact, uh, young Zach Kwan is quite good at it and uh, has engaged in games with uh, Coach Angel Nino on several occasions and beaten him handily. You hear that, Nino? Kwan's got your number. Should host a, uh, an online tournament one of these days. He used to play chess a lot as a young man, then got out of it. All right, next up, St to the start line. He may not be the biggest competitor on the roster, but we call him Big Game Shane, because this kid knows how to show up when it is time to compete. He hears those buzzers, and off he goes. He just loves, it. he gets those big eyes, and you can see him not afraid to move his way Big through the course. You ask a couple of the uh, the veterans on the team. Shane is, oh no! He's one of their favorite ninjas. He, it really is the heart and soul of, uh, of this division. Always the first to, to come to practice. Sometimes the last to leave. He just absolutely loves this stuff. He's in his, oh, he's cleaned up his uh, signature two kick. Oh, nope, there it is. <laughs> this obstacle helps him out with that a little bit. We've been working on Shane's mechanics for years to try to get him to kick both feet at the same time so that he can get some extra um, power out of it because he's so small. And here he goes. Nice. Look at that grip, Shane. Oh, dang it. Well, he's running for fun. But, yeah, the the – that one-two kick, almost like a uh, like a karate kick, almost. He can get away with it on certain obstacles, but I may be mistaken. This might be the same song he ran to last year. I think he I think he might have picked this same song last year. Weird that I would even maybe remember that, but it's 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 sticking out like it did. Gotta love. If you're uh, if you're looking for a, a, a cute interview, check out the uh, stage four designs. There you go. Oh, right on. This kid just brachiated spinning peg graspers. <laughs> right on, dude. Um, so go head on over to the stage four Instagram, uh, and you'll find a very humorous interview uh, between former uh, action team members Ethan Zimmerman and uh, True Becker, uh, where they. They did an interview with Shane uh, on his home course, which Stage 4 didn't actually build, but added some accessories to. Uh, they just thought he would be an interesting character to, uh, to have. It's a really cute interview. Him and uh, Emelyn, uh, two of our younger team members. Really cute on that. Oh, and down he goes, out of the ceiling. He'll be fine. If you're new to Ninja, that might have looked dramatic. If you know, you know. Shane will be fine. He bounces. All right, next up, Quinn Mackery. Quinn Mackery. So Quinn is an, is an athlete's athlete. Loves football, basketball, lacrosse, and the Patriots. So a ninja who comes to uh, his love of ninja from a more traditional sports angle. A lot of times you'll see ninjas who, who didn't play traditional sports. Um, you know, they're the ones who tend to enjoy the challenge of it, the more meticulous ones, the, the kids who solve uh, Rubik's Cubes and are on robotics teams. It, it takes a meticulous nature uh, to really excel at the sport. Um, you have to look at it a certain way. Not that it doesn't to memorize a football playbook or to read a pitch. Um, or to understand the intricacies of rugby. Uh, but, you know, the, the more uh, type A uh, kids who have more in analytical minds. But having come from a team sports background myself, I always like to see these guys get out here and, and, and mix it up. I'm a firm believer that team sports build character in, uh, in young men and women. And 
show them how to work as a group, show them how to uh, empathize and care for other people's uh, feelings and you know, sharing the joy of maybe you didn't have the best game, but your team picked you up and uh, ended up winning anyway, or the excruciating loss of uh, knowing how to handle that you had your best game, but your team still lost. These are all important life lessons that uh, you know, team sports teach us. And I think there's a big place for that. Now, as I've been rambling on, this young man, nice, is still alive and could be our first athlete through Frog Pond. Awesome, with a minute left to go. It's hard to say since we've added those UFOs back in if a minute's going to be enough time for him to make it through these last three obstacles. A little hang up here. Now, if he does it the way Shane does, is able to brachiate through this, he could probably be fine. He's a bit taller, so he could probably pull up to that UFO a bit easier. There we go. Seek out those peg balls, latch onto them. Got to pull up here, maybe get to that the ledge of that four. Get up there, bud. It's going to take a pull up. You've got to find it. You're not going to be able to swing your way there. You've got to pull. Mm, this isn't looking good. Uh, well, he got the point, so he touched it. All right, maybe that was his plan all along. He got the point, and that moved him into second place. Nicely done. Just a little bit behind Brady Flynn, who ran in our first wave. Nice. Good for him. All right. Our second young lady uh, to take the course today. This is one of two Barrett sisters that we are going to see on the course. This is Lily Barrett, the uh, um, rivalry between Charlotte and Lily Barrett is legendary um, amongst uh, the hallowed grounds of TA Fitness. These two are constantly pushing each other and uh, really tr both tremendous ninjas in their own right. I mean, having two little girls myself, they're not twins, people think they are, they're two years apart. But watching the sisters um, push each other, you know, play together, but then also have that little bit of sister edge to it, that little competitiveness. You can get a lot of high quality uh, athleticism out of the desire to beat your sister at anything. Trust me, I have a sister. She's seven years older than I am, and I would gladly want to beat her at everything. Don't ever mention the uh, Trivial Pursuit game that we played when I was in seventh grade and she was in college, and I beat her. She hates that story. But since Lily didn't give me anything to talk about her, I'm just going to continue to critique her run and make up things that I find interesting. Um, she really is being very efficient right here. Uh, not taking a lot of time on uh, start and finish platforms. Grabbing there, matching, and switching. That seems to be the preferred technique here through this obstacle. You can see how much it moves. Now, once we take those peg ball graspers away for later uh, waves, you're really going to see that obstacle opened up uh, the way that we had kind of drawn it up, the, the way we wanted it to, uh, to function. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So definitely tune in tomorrow for uh, the, well, I mean, we're going to open it up for the teens. So <laughs> stay tuned for the teen wave if you want to see that obstacle function. And she's coming from really low as well. Oh, I mean, one rung up, and I think... Uh, she might have had it. Maybe she didn't feel like she had the salmon ladder. Uh, you know, she had the transfer. A lot of times kids will get a transfer more consistently than they'll get um, the actual up move. Or maybe she just felt like she didn't have it. Whoa. Held on there for as long as she could. There you go. Kira telling me, go back. Get, get that one again. You're on, you're on house money time. Right? Let's go. Take your 245. Got it, kiddo. Let's go. There it is. Man, that just went right to her hand, but then whew, hands are gassed. Clock winding down on Lily Barrett. As she makes her way to the angel step. And that was about it. Didn't quite get the buzzer there, but all right. So now, the game within the game. We'll have to see how Charlotte does later, so then we'll know how the car ride home goes. 
Next up, Ashlyn McNamara. Loves hula hooping and skateboarding. Oh, that was Kira's fault. Yeah, yeah. If her name is still up, then she's good, right? Oh, because it's run out. He has to... Oh, no. There you go. So many buzzers. There we go. So apparently uh, uh, Ashlyn's coach, Kira, wasn't ready. She was still over there with her uh, previous... runner and trust me as someone who's definitely run back and forth across ultimate obstacles more times than i can imagine or has run around like a cat long-legged cat in a room full of rocking chairs that was the old colloquialism now the kids all laughed at me when we did the walkthrough and i said i was going to give you a point for getting to the rope and if you got hung up you had to stay active and this and she can work her way out of this she absolutely can but she needs to get active there you go, a little push off. It's gonna take more than that. She needs two, three, four pulls. Her coach ought to be yelling at her, which I'm sure she is. She's gotta stick with it. Oh, and just the hands gave out. You can't sleep on any one obstacle here. We know Ashlyn is a really good ninja who just got hung up in a bad position there. She can reach on this one. There you go, get those hips going. Oh, peel off on that one. Yeah. It's okay. One obstacle does not a ninja make. Anything can happen on a course. I've watched some of the most accomplished ninjas fail on the first obstacle, and I've watched some of the most unlikely ninjas make it all the way to the end. It, anything can happen on a course. She's trying, and she, you know what? She's giving it everything she has right now. She's got to work through this, and this is, Kira is a good coach, helping her make sure that she doesn't give up. I say it to my kids all the time. It's okay to fail. It's not okay to give up. Put that in your life lessons little notebook and try to remember it. We're all going to fail. We're all going to have good days and bad, but you just keep going. Because there's always people who believe in you, like Kira believes in Ashlyn right now. Sometimes when you're really struggling, you need that person who believes in you more than you believe in yourself. Look at that. She's throwing, she's showing confidence on that obstacle. She had all the lachet she needed. And you can almost see her starting to come back to life a little bit here. reaches out she's got the wingspan for it there you go hold on to it kiddo that's it Big shout out to my friends Strat and Flip. Appreciate you guys chiming in on the YouTube comments. You guys are great, man. We loved having you out here when we could a couple years ago. Glad to see everything that you're doing. Still keep up with you guys on Instagram. And uh, it's nice to see everybody's finding their way to make it. But I got to take a little time out here and talk about Lily Moninger. Can't just bask in the, the glow of glowing YouTube comments because Lily Moninger, one of the... Uh, big three um her that we want to watch today her Aka, daniel um, decided to make the move to a different gym to train this year as uh pre-teens they're chasing that nnl championship that's what they really really want so they're going after it um and we obviously want to see lily move well She is one of the taller athletes uh, in this division. So we had already talked about that. Taller athletes have got to keep their legs up. 
Lily's definitely used to it. She's a dancer. Oh, I'm sorry, not dancer. Uh, she's. <laughs> Where is she on my list? Oh my god, horseback riding. That's what it is. Horseback riding and piano. Uh, it takes so much coordination to ride a horse. As someone who grew up on a farm, I can absolutely tell you that. Um, leg muscles, and then you got it. I mean, feeling that much power of an animal, uh, and knowing that at any given time it can do whatever it wants. <laughs> probably the closest thing to uh you know i wouldn't say ninja is a thrill compared to that but um flying through the air mm, sure why not it was me that was me flip your old buddy nate dusted off a couple of uh classics the moon rocks and uh designed a few myself Stage four designs has now made all the obstacles that you see on this course, with the exception of a handful of climbing holds. And we hope to launch our product catalog to gyms nation and worldwide in the next couple weeks. Let's go, Lily. Using those long arms. She is able to cover so much ground so quickly. But again, another victim of the, uh, the froggy delivery. You got two slots to try to get it in, and, and you'd be surprised just how difficult it is uh, to make that match up. And she's needed to work on her salmon ladder transfers for a while yet as well. She's, you know, super nice and takes a bit of aggressiveness to get that, to get that salmon ladder transfer for the first time. She was working with Ethan a couple months ago before uh, before Worlds. They had it dialed in pretty good, so hopefully we continue to see her, uh, you know, improve. And I doubt that's the last time we'll see Lily. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Yes. Titan. Uh, I, I went over the list before this wave. I saw Titan's name stand out. He was, he's definitely one to watch. He is a, uh, well, he's a beast. He's a Titan. That kid popped on the scene uh, for me maybe a little less than a year ago. And I remember just watching his first run and being like, man, where did this kid come from? I, I hadn't seen him before, but haven't forgotten him since. And if you're a fan of uh, the Last Kingdom series, you know that reputation can only be made and destiny is all. And hopefully today is a good reputation day for Titan. Next up on the course, Adelina Messier. Another Imagine Dragons tune leading us on down this run. Says Adelaide loves to do laches. Well, she can get through this one. She's got a couple uh, coming up here on the, uh, the pizza cutters. She started Taekwondo two years ago, and this summer she started rock climbing once a week. A well-rounded ninja. Good. Rock climbing is so important for developing that finger strength uh, and just problem-solving ability. It's so beneficial for ninjas to do. She's a tall one as well. Really kicking that pizza cutter, but didn't let it distract her. Good composure on the course. She'll have no problem reaching out and grabbing these guys here. Look at that finger strength. That one time a week rock climbing is really improving her grip strength. Good job, Adelina. She says she splits her time mostly between Albany Ninja Lab and sometimes Saratoga Ninja Lab. So making a few rounds around upstate New York. Sets her hips. Excellent. She's probably going to want to go up one more. That's crossed up. Fix it. There you go. All right. Now come in from the underside here and make it stick. Oh, man. She went one hand first. Looked like her hips were behind her. That was weird. Her hips got underneath it. Um, she wasn't totally balanced going into the, into the grab. A bit of an awkward throw. That just put her in first place. Thank you. The uh, rules committee, or sorry, the <laughs> Ninja Works, our crack team here at Ninja Works, who's keeping me updated on the comments on the YouTube, uh, which I appreciate. I love this thing to be interactive. It's not just me screaming into the void. Um, it's also giving me stats. So that move right there uh, moved Adelaide, uh, Adelena into first place, which is very interesting because the next competitor up is going to be Akshara Papu. Uh, an NNL world finalist and a perennial contender to win first place in, at any given qualifier. She's one of the most accomplished ninjas in this division. 
So we'll have to see how this, uh, how this all pans out. I love seeing so many strong, strong young ladies um, tackling this course. You'll notice we did not change any of the rules for ladies. You know, and in this division, the separation isn't that dramatic. We understand that. But I'm a firm believer that the course is the course. Obstacles are obstacles. And girls can do anything. So, All right, Akshara, fifth season competing in the NNL. She goes, moving as efficiently as ever. Her hair's getting long, too. Off she goes down the line, over top. Making short work of this. Very smooth. That's what you would expect out of Aka. Next camera, please. There we go. All the way across the space program. Now onto the pizza cutters. Aka very efficient. And here we go. Left hand first, matches, tucks the right hand underneath, and off she goes. Very nicely done. Still a minute 40. Gets the transfer. Yep, smart. Goes up one. Looks like she's going to set up for the special deliver froggy delivery now. I'm just going to change it to a whole different name. Why get confused? Nice. So smooth through that. She saw that the whole way. Okay. We've got a contender here to complete for sure. A minute left. She's so light on her feet. Going the peg grasper route. Just going to span through them. Very nice. Didn't even worry about that wrist flip. Now she's got to pull up. Touched it, so there's the point. Yep. Oh, clamp down on it, kiddo. There she goes. Very nice, very nice. Just a little bit more back in her element. She's very comfortable on UFOs. This next big one. Oh, yeah. She gets this. We've got our first female finisher coming up. This is just a walk in the park for young Akshara Papu, and over she goes. She knows how to get that angel step moving. There it is. A finisher in the ladies' division. That's what we like to see. Well done, Aka. Well done. 227. Let's see if any of the other ladies coming up here. We have Abby Berkland, Anya Ludke. She is indeed. She has been for a long time, and she just keeps getting better. There's always Charlotte Barrett, though. Always tight on Aka's heels. Those Barrett sisters can't be uh, can't be counted out. So very compelling stuff in the in the uh, ladies' division. Uh, uh, it's what we like to see. This uh, wave is living up to the hype. Next up, Luke Kemmerer. Running to Led Zeppelin, always a good choice. Favorite obstacle is the balance tank. Bit of an odd choice, but hey, I like those sort of one-offs. You know, you find something, you get a lot of warp wall, a lot of liches, balance tank. When Luke is not doing ninja, he spends his time writing and illustrating comic books. Well, as a comic book fan myself, my friend, I will tell you uh, someday I hope to uh, Read some of your stuff. That'd be great. Recently took up playing golf and built an electric guitar with his dad and is excited about uh, starting lessons. Well, geez, this kid just keeps getting better all the time, and I don't even care about his ninja performance. I'm just intrigued by his uh, information on the sheet. Calls himself the Pineapple Ninja. At least that's what it says on his shirt. And... Do love a good pineapple, especially in a smoothie or in a pina colada. All right. Can he get the connection? This has been a crux point for some of these ninjas today, this, this uh, salmon ladder transfer. Ah. Oh. 
listening to his uh, teammate there tell him to overshoot it. I, I think maybe that was uh, an obstacle he might have been worried about. Hands and feet, okay in this division. <laughs> They're okay. I didn't say it was easy. Then he makes it. He looks strong up to that point, and that seems to be one of those skills that in this particular division, uh, kids either have it or they don't, which is why early on in the season like this, it's really important for them to focus on uh, acquiring skills. You know, conditioning is important too, um, but if there are skills that are going to pop up in a course, uh, you need to make sure that uh, you've got you've got that skill in the bag because it makes such a mental difference. When you're standing there looking over the course, you never want to look at an obstacle and go, oh man, I don't have that. I don't have it in the back. It'll be in the back of your head your entire run. Um, so hopefully Luke goes back and spends, uh, you know, his, his thousand hours or so on how to get that salmon ladder transfer so it doesn't happen again because that was a great run. Otherwise, he, he really made that course look, uh, look fun. Moving on down the line, Brian Landau. This might be, I don't remember seeing Brian. This might be my first time seeing him. He doesn't ring a bell. He did ask uh, some very pertinent questions during the uh, walkthrough. So he's clearly, a, you know, has a couple of uh, seasons. Under him. Obviously, this is his fourth season. But uh, I don't know. Maybe this just isn't uh, ringing a bell. He's taking an interesting approach to the uh, Monster Mountain. Oof, is he going to try to throw the 1E? Those long legs are going to get in the way, bro. I think he might want to take the high road. There you go. You can throw it that way for sure. Big back kick and go. Nice. There you go. Oh, he's a ninja mania guy. I got gotcha. you. Okay. That's why he's so experienced, but maybe I haven't heard of him too much. He's good. Digs a knee right into the corner of that uh, box there. Luckily, that's not a consequence box. We padded that one for you. There we go. He's doing a good job keeping his legs up. Gets the generous catch there. Dig it. And into the boomerangs. <laughs> I'd be bereft if I didn't, you know, acknowledge the fact that boom, 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 boom. And the song, and he's on the boomerangs. I mean, coincidence. Sometimes they say the universe speaks to you in interesting ways. That's one where... Maybe. Why not? You got it, buddy. Get more swing, man. That's it. They'll move with you. That's what they're for. That's it. See, he was stoked on that. See him flex it out on the crowd a little bit. Forty-five seconds left on Brian's uh, run. Looks like we'll get a chance to see him uh, tackle the fish market and hopefully uh, make the touch on the frog pond. There he is. Come on. Probably going to want to come up one more. Oh, boy. He's got a lot of swing for that salmon ladder bar. Is he trying to go up to the spot? He is. Ooh, again, another one who came at it seemingly really low. And then his uh, fingers just, just slipped out. Little, little things like strategy. On that. Oh boy, he got pitched out <laughs> a little too far on that conveyor belt. As his time is winding down. Touch the UFO. That would have counted if he hadn't uh, failed earlier. So, all in all, pretty good run out of Brian. I'm, I'm glad he made it through those boomerangs. You like to see somebody, you know, things go awry. You want to see him stick with it and uh, not just give up. All right, next up, Eli Wimber. <laughs> Young man who came up through the uh, action class system. Uh, made his way from level one to level two and eventually team. Um, developed uh, this insatiable thirst for ninja that ultimately uh, led him down the road. You see Coach Jordan there on his sidelines to uh, seek NNL glory. But certainly Eli... Very comfortable in this gym. 
knows his way around, has not seen any of these obstacles before, that's for sure. Stage four uh, building uh, almost all of this course uh, proprietary for this event, with the exception of this one right here. Um, space program. There he goes. Hitch is on the backswing. Eli very comfortable on Lachey's. He's got a fast time going here. A minute 42 through that little hitch. Cost him about half a second. Okay. This is really where the, uh, what it's going to come down to. Can he get through this obstacle and then the short break for conveyor belt and then the next one. Good, nice and high on that. He's lined up well for the froggy delivery. Gets it, sticks it I think in the high side if I can see correctly, that was the 10 inch uh, opening on the top. All right, quick breather here on conveyor belt but don't sleep on it. Good, okay. There you go, a minute left to complete these last three obstacles. There he goes, matches. Oh, oh, just didn't have it on the peg grasper. Ah, sad peel off, but. That was good enough for third place. Look at that. Not bad, not bad. That was good. Minute 42 to that point. He was really looking good, uh, you know, just. One of those things, I don't sleep on that. I mean, I, I say that about the, the balance obstacles, but really the uh, that obstacle is a monster. And when we take those uh, peg graspers off the backs uh, for the adults and just have them use only the cliffhangers, um, it's really gonna start to show uh, why it's one of my favorites that we've designed over the last uh, few months. Here we go, Owen Westerland. Uh, <laughs> wants, wants to run to party in the CIA by Weird Al, okay. I didn't even know he made like a parody song of that. Maybe I'll just have to look it up after I get out of here. Um, what do we got? Favorite obstacles for this young man, all of them. Just wrote all of them. Give me all the obstacles. Oh. When you're this, you know, this height, and I talk about the height difference in the preteen division. You know, this young man, obviously, he's like he's like Shane size. You know, Shane ran earlier. Um, you know, you could say they're at a disadvantage, but there's they all have different strengths. You know, they just need to figure out what they are and then utilize them. Everybody's got something in them that that they can unlock. And for this young man to get up on an obstacle like this and reach out, that's it. And understand that he can do a big move. Now keep that kick going. That's it. Touched it. Come on, let's get bigger. That's it. Bigger. Keep touching it. Okay. That's a big reach, man, for sure. Uh, now watch. He's just going to pop out here, and he's going to have like a salmon ladder transfer that's just so aggressive. Come on, buddy. Give me that big kick. It ain't coming out on you. No? Okay. I was holding out for a surprise. Go hit that conveyor belt. So he loves drawing and parkour, and his, he's passionate about CHD awareness, congenital heart defect. Um, clearly, that's a subject that is uh, near and dear to Owen that he cares about. Um, if you know someone or uh, someone in your family has a uh, congenital heart defect, it's important uh, that we all know that is not... Uh, a, a crutch that will hold you back from living a fulfilling life. This young man is out here doing ninja at, I'm going to assume, 11 or 12 years old. I'm sure somewhere along the line his life hasn't always been that easy. But look at him up here about to hit this buzzer. About to hit this buzzer. Well, there you go. It was a hard road to get there, but he got there. That's what it's all about. Great job, Owen. All right, here we go, our final sheet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. A dirty dozen of ninjas still left to run. Oh, maybe 
JB less. We got Anya Lipke here. So maybe 11. Let's see, Anya Lipke has made her way around uh, Nina for, for a few years now. She and her brother Nate, very accomplished uh, and seasoned ninjas. There you go. It's her third season uh, competing in the NNL and uh, under her things that she does when she's not ninjing. TikTok. 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 Watch the spin on that orbiter. You got it. Cool. There she goes. Right through it. And up and up and up she goes. Nice. That right hand looked like it might not have settled into uh, the cradle right away, but she stuck with it and kept the grab going. Very nice again, grabbing those really on the far side. Okay, pulls it to her, sets her hips, gets that left hand to come around. Minute left as she heads into the fish market. Says she loves lachets. Okay, loves lachets, but taking the bar with you is a whole nother element. And really, in this preteen age division, this is where you see. Oh, look at that. Her mask has completely fallen down under her chin now. The, uh, the preteen age division is where you see that separation. The kids who have the salmon ladder transfer and the kids who don't. And if you're going to be competitive in this division, you have got to have the salmon ladder transfer. So I hope the lesson that maybe some of these ninjas take back to their gyms when they go back to training. It's still very early in the season. They've got to acquire uh, that skill, it will give them a ton more confidence heading into courses. Um, they will be able to uh, to step to the start line with, with the knowledge that they have it, uh, and it's not something that they have to dread. All right, Zane. Zane Elibon. Right on. Let's go, Zane. Very quickly through that first one. I think Zane, if I'm reading his shirt correctly, oh yeah, he's ultimate obstacles. I remember Zane from the, I think it was in the Mature Kids division last year. Looks really big, but then again, we've been saying all day, there's something in the water out there in West Boylston. These guys are monsters from age six all the way up to 16. And then something happens when they reach Keenan's age and they just stop growing, stop maturing too. Big step. Don't worry about the spin. You got it, buddy. That's it. Excellent. <laughs> you can hear Zane talking to himself on the course. We have a couple kids on our team that do that as well. Kind of self-narrate. <laughs> oh, just came up short one of those things that uh, you might see him in a couple of shots missing or uh, off to the side. We got Zach Kwan on our team. He's notorious for uh, narrating his own uh, his own runs. <laughs> he doesn't even realize that he's doing it either. It's, it's just kind of like a, uh, a nervous tick. Let's go, Zane. Ooh, power through there. Nice. But does he have the precision? Oh, just peeled off on it. Those frogs are mean. 
There you go. Yeah, after the athlete earlier that got a little squirrely to the outside, Keenan yelling at his athletes to keep it in, keep it on the inside track on the uh, conveyor belt there. Now there are some obstacles that are finessey. There are some obstacles that are uh, powerful. There are some obstacles that are dynamic or uh, precise. That 3-4 defense obstacle is just annoying. It doesn't move the way you think it's going to move. Sometimes you find yourself in the pocket and you can get it figured out, but it's different for everyone. And that's kind of why we like this obstacle. I like, I like the way it moves. I like people to be uncomfortable. I want to throw something at them that they haven't seen before and then make them adapt. That's what the good ninjas do. Very nicely done. Okay. Next up, Flip, your boy Titan. He's coming up. Now, here's one kid that, if I'm not mistaken, he's wearing a Ninja Mania shirt. Oh, boy. Welcome to Nina, Titan. This is going to be... We have a, a match against them, I believe, later this season. And uh, this kid just lights it up. Wow, very nicely done. He's definitely attacking this course a little bit more than even we saw, you know, a few of the others before him. Because I think he knows, you know, if he's going to get that finish, he needs to hustle. That's it. Oh, just Lincoln right off the first one. Very nicely done. Seems a little early in the season for his run music, but... There's no accounting for taste. Anytime's a good time to get in the holiday spirit. Let's go, Titan. Now, this transfer should be no problem for, it, for him. It'll come down to uh, the froggy delivery. He's got to get his hands set and in there. Got it. And I think that might be it's still very early to tell because he still has to wrestle with 3-4 defense, and anything can happen on the conveyor belt. Okay, he's through. Now, 3-4 defense. This is not an easy gauntlet right here to get through. So he's going to use both sides. Interesting. He's going on the cliffhanger side. Okay. Good. Just a one hand just hanging it out there. That thing's putting him in the spin cycle. Oh, boy. He's got it by the back side touches it. How can he compose himself and wait for it to come around? Ah, he grabs it again. This is so taxing on his grip and on his forearms. All these pull-ups. Just trying to use that swing, but then it takes it away. This is what I was talking about. This obstacle is annoying. Oh, he's right there. No, that is probably not the best advice. Oh, boy. Pull up to it. There you go. He had the right idea before. I think being on the ledge on the top is the way to go for these guys who are this age, this size. But he's, his, his lower body is way too active, and that's what's causing that four to keep spinning around. He needs to calm his lower body, almost engage like he's trying to do a uh, pegboard, and just wait for it to come around to him. But this is a heck of a fight, man. He just... Oh, if he hadn't gone back down to the ledge and the and the peg grass, would maybe it's still good enough for first place for sure. Um, four seconds ahead of Brady Flynn, and uh, about thirty seconds ahead of Quinn Macri. Um, yeah, he just got hung up there. That's all that can happen. Yeah, for sure. That was a good one, and that's kind of what we wanted when we set that obstacle up. I, I, some of these guys that get into a flow and they know how an obstacle moves and they expect it to do something certain, um, you just, there's a lot of really high level athletes in this group. And we wanted to honor those athletes by giving them challenges uh, that would indeed do just that. Not something they could just run through for time. In the true spirit of Ninja, can we do it? 
There you go. She's got the grab underneath. Esme. So Esme loves the little dipper, writing and listening to music. And she's environmentalist, likes keeping the environment healthy. Well, thanks, Esme, because I plan to live to a ripe old age, and I would still like a planet to be here when I do. So another tall athlete who's going to have to uh, keep the legs up through this one. Very nicely done. Here we go. Kicks those legs out in front. Easy on the grab. Very nice. Okay, boomerangs coming up next. Good. Oh, just wait till that teen division. Those peg graspers are coming off. So is the tape. <laughs> now maybe we'll leave the tape on, you know? Kind of makes them look like boomerangs. We literally just put it on there so that the screw holes wouldn't uh, be, you know, scratchy. Oh, you know, given the way that she swung on the pizza cutters, I thought she might have had a little better swing on that, that sand ladder bar. But again, it's the difference between taking the bar with you and just throwing your body. There's a big difference. And this is the age group where it really showcases uh, just that. Esme's finding herself in the same position that uh, Titan did just a couple minutes ago. Let's see if she can get it figured out. It, uh, maybe it was Dave uh, Cavanaugh in here yesterday who had said, uh, he's like, it's really weird because you don't feel like you want to uh, like lock off or crimp grip uh, on a UFO. You don't, s you don't normally static UFOs, uh, but that small one is small enough that you can static it. Um, so you have to just... You know, clamp down on it and lock it in. Doesn't make any sense to lache to it. All right, Anna Hoyle. Anna's been competing for quite a while. I she's a staple of our NNLs and uh, competing in New England in general. So we always like to see her make the trip out. I believe she's still a member of the TA Ninja team. We'll see a couple of those athletes tomorrow. Lucas Reale is going to compete in the elite division. Um, I think I saw Kira's name on the list as well. She's doing a lot of coaching today, so she's just going to hang out here all weekend. Dave, uh, I mentioned that he uh, was testing. Uh, he is not able to make the competition. He has a wedding to go to, I believe. So congratulations to whomever he knows who's getting married. But Dave, I hate to tell you, I'm sure there's a bunch of other ninjas that are just super ha happy and tickled that you're not going to be competing tomorrow. <laughs> Gives everyone else a little bit more of a chance. True will be here tomorrow for sure. He's probably on, uh, you know, a lot of people's lists as a, a top contender. I believe we have 16 elites competing tomorrow that last uh, last I checked oh there's those Jimmy legs oh and the hands come down that step is diabolical it will expose your nerves like nothing else some can make it look super easy others All right, Anya through the boomerang. She's just kind of touching everything here. You know, after a fall on something like the space program, whoosh, just chuck the bar at it. That bar is so light. I'm Man, 
big shout out to James McGrath uh, for turning me on to that style of uh, salmon ladder bar. It is virtually indestructible. We were going through salmon lad ladder bars at a clip of like maybe a new one every three months. And by the time that three month was over, that thing was bent and gross. We've had that same salmon ladder bar for the better part of two, three years now. Um, we have our suspension system that allows it to go up and over the, uh, the freestanding. So we have a three layer. And boy, that salmon ladder has seen a lot of abuse. Uh, in case you forgot, Nate Pardo trains here. Uh, and his aggressive salmon ladder ronging can be heard echoing throughout the gym on any given <laughs> time. I'm going to start calling them the Pardo notches, all the uh, notches in our rungs <laughs> from just rep after rep after rep after rep. All right, next up, DJ Pardo on the ones and twos today. He's handling all the music for our competitors' runs. Shout out to Nate Pardo for helping out today. Next up, Elliot. Huh, how ironic that Elliot didn't want <laughs> any run music right when I shout out the DJ. <laughs> oh, no. And now Elliot is here hung up a little bit. Now, if he can get back to that step. There you go. There you go. There you go. Good wherewithal. Don't let it die on the vine. Good job. Good job. Five more athletes after Elliot, including Ben Simpson, uh, Colin Vitale, Dana Woods, and then Charlotte Barrett will get the last uh, the last say in the heated uh, battle of the ladies. So far, only one finisher, just Akshara. Slip back on the spinning disc. Oh, some can just make it look so easy, but then others are just kind of like, ugh. Jumps up to bite you. All right, as Elliot is going to give his bid for the 3 4 defense. Nice and low, gets there quickly. Up to the top. It seems to be lining up for him. If he can make this move here, pinches. Look at that. Textbook. That's exactly how we drew it up. So Elliot was able to figure it out pretty quickly. Now. You know, the pressure's off. Obviously, he's, he's playing with house money right now, but um, that is the move. So hopefully, maybe some of the other ninjas were watching. They get the beta on it. Um, he seemed to move fairly smoothly through that. So. Those little nuggets. All right, here we go. Final four. Five, five. Final four. Who scratched? No Colin Vitale. All right. Well, here we go. Ben Simpson out of Ultimate Obstacles, a contender in his own right. We've been watching Ben grow up over the years. He's always one of those guys that moves big, you know, you always see his name up there on the leaderboard. Always top ten. Very, very seasoned. Got a lot of obstacle uh, experience under his belt. There you go. Always, a, you know, perennial regional qualifier. I don't know if he made it to Worlds last night. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. He has all the skills, too. 
And since he didn't give me anything to say about him, I'll just continue to speculate about his ninja career. But he's moving really well here. A minute 45 into the fish market. Oh, look at that. His mask just fell completely off his face like an accident. Big and powerful through the transfer. Can he stick it? Got it. Okay. Coach Keenan, very fired up. Okay. Well, with over a minute left, his, his pace is behind Titan, but Titan uh, didn't make it through uh, stage four first contact. So if he can get through this one and up, and touch that UFO. There he goes. Okay, 17 seconds behind Titan. But, oh, he made the connection. Oh, my God. So quickly. He needs to complete this obstacle. Good. Got plenty of time. Got to complete this. This will put him in first place if he can get past this obstacle. Got to stick the landing. Good. We could have our first finisher here since Akshara. Up and up and up and up. There he goes. Well done. 235.96 for Ben Seamson. And that puts him in first place. Look at this kid. Stepping up, knocking down 13, 10 seconds to spare. And now that puts the pressure on our last two competitors, our uh, male competitors, Nick Donahue and Daniel Woods. <coughs> They've seen it can be done. Is the send train pulling out of the station for a second time where we can get, you know, usually these finishes, they come in bunches. go. Nick moving really well. There he goes. Underneath. Good. Up and over the top. Okay. I can't afford to make a mistake here. That's it. That's it. Nice and easy. Just get off it. Good. Awesome. And here we go. Now into the pizza cutters. All right, Nick just setting him up and knocking him down. Kira is encouraging him to move on quickly, quickly. I think he's a little bit behind the pace here, um, taking his time. But I think he's going to try to complete. Obviously, everybody's trying to complete. But okay, oh, he's in that low position again, coming up into this. Ah, and there it is again. We've, we've seen that happen three times now. It's just a too too low of an angle to really make it happen there. Man, and Nick just made that obstacle look so easy to get to that last four. He had just made the grab. You know, look at this. He's clamping down. Oh, let's slip. Well, you know, maybe you put a little bit more effort in if you're still in the running for it. You get that adrenaline flowing, but it's a hard grab. There we go. That 
close. That close. But our final competitor who wants to claim that number one spot from Akshara Papu and is certainly in a position to do it, Charlotte Barrett. Just moving well here. have to look back and I don't have the leaderboard in front of me if I were to see how Lily did earlier. I want to say I think it was the transfer or maybe it was the uh, the special delivery. I don't remember but I don't really think Charlotte's thinking about that right now. She's got one thing on her mind and that is uh, completing this course. You know, obviously it's always competitive with your sister but uh, She's got eyes on that number one spot. She's a gamer. Whoop. Stick with it. This is far from over. There it is. Just had to wait for it to lock match up for her. She's coming at it really low again. Oh, like just wanted to touch it and maybe get through that, I guess. Fourth place, Lily made it a little bit faster. Uh, so if she, maybe she hadn't gotten hung up on the uh, on the boomerangs, but well, comes down to just a couple seconds.
I really think like this this whole division, this whole the kids were throwing at that uh, fishy delivery from too low. Am I wrong? Yeah. yeah kind of, you know. Just take that extra rung. But maybe they felt like their salmon ladder game wasn't as much on point. And so we shall see. All right. So that is going to do it. I'm sure we are going to have to do some sign-offs before this happens. So let me go take care of a little bit of business here before we pull the uh, course apart.